So I want to just take a few select verses from Psalm 73 because I think it really addresses some of the practical issues that we face. Because we do have emotions. We do have feelings. And look, we've never lived in, in a society where there was so much available information. But you'd have to say, not all of it's reliable, right? So you end up finding you know, something that looks good and they're, they're feeding you information, but it's not what it appears to be all the time. So you really need to pray and ask the Lord, is this legit? Should I be spending my time on this? Because you can get so hooked on something, you're spending more time reading about the policies than you are the Bible. But the politics will be ever-changing. This never changes. And the more you spend it here, the more you'll know how to apply it to what we're dealing with in the culture. I'm not saying it's not important. I mean, we've been talking about Lance Wall now for 20 years since we started. And he's been saying the churches need to activate the saints to take over the seven mountains. And it, la it landed on a lot of deaf ears. because His teaching wasn't really implemented the way it could have been. So what did we learn? we got to get involved. You can't just complain about it, but you can get on a local school board. You can run for office. You can say, I want to bring the, the biblical principles, which are all grounded in truth, but you just need to be a reliable person. And I have to say, if you're not willing to do that, then support somebody who is, who's a Christian. And if you're not willing to do either one of those, then you don't really have much of a right to complain. You should be doing something about it, right? Okay. Psalm 73, verse 1. God is really good to Israel. Somebody say amen. amen. That's right. We all know that. God is really good to Israel and to all those with pure hearts. But I nearly missed seeing it for myself. And he repeats it in verse 2. I narrowly missed losing it all. Verse 3. I was stumbling over what I saw with the wicked. That's a word for right now. Okay? Be careful that you're not stumbling over what you see with the wicked based on your definition of the wicked, right? And that's fine. You should be discerning. And we are supposed to test the spirits. But don't let yourself stumble because of that. Ask the Lord, continue to build me up in my immune system so that I can keep that clear word. Bring me a minstrel. I don't want to act out of my flesh. Verse 6, cruelty and violence is part of their lifestyle. They even scoff at God. They're nothing but bullies threatening God's people. And then, here's the big question mark. Have I been foolish to play by the rules and keep my life pure? That's the devil. Planting that seed. It doesn't pay to serve God. Look what happened. You prayed, you prayed, and nothing. You didn't see the result you wanted, so don't bother. No, no, dig in more. Double down. <laughs> Ask for a double portion. And then verse 16. Oh, just what he said. I'm about to stumble he says, when I tried to understand it all, I just couldn't. It was too puzzling, too much of a riddle to me. Anybody feeling like that here? I would really like this to be prayer together. Stand if that's you. Like you're just feeling in this swirl of confusion about everything that's going on right now. It's okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You're not admitting any kind of weakness. You're just being honest. So, Lord, we just thank you for those that are standing right now. I really understand how confusing the whole thing has been for, you, for me, for sure. And, and we say, we know that's not your will. And we ask you for the strength right now to come into our hearts. That song we sing, even though I'm in the storm, the storm is not in me. We speak peace to the storms of confusion. Amen. And we say, life and godliness and the peace of God to rule and reign as the governor of your soul. Amen. And just like this man in, in verse 16, he said, when I tried to understand, I just couldn't. It was too puzzling, too much of a riddle to me. But look what it says next. But then one day, I was brought into the sanctuaries of God. And in the light of glory, my distorted perspective vanished. So I speak that over you. I speak that over you. That the distorted perspective that the world's been trying to feed you will vanish and that you will come into the sanctuary of the Lord. And that peace of God, that presence of his spirit, will bring rest to your soul. That's what I said earlier. We are prisoners of hope. Jesus Christ is the anchor of our soul. And if we're hijacked emotionally, we can't be effective as effective for God. Amen? So we know this is his will. I'm claiming it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is so awesome that no matter what we're going through, that when we get brought into the sanctuary and we tune into that hiding place of God's glory, 
That's what he's saying. When I, when I was brought into the sanctuary in the light of glory, my distorted perspective vanished. I got the reality of the truth of the word of God. Taking away those twisted thoughts and my distorted perspective. And then I understood the destiny of the wicked was near. When I saw all of this, this is a pretty convicting verse. When I saw all of this, what turmoil filled my heart, piercing my opinions with your truth. Careful with your opinions if they're not lining up with the word of God. Well, I don't want to pray for this president. Wait a minute. That's a direct violation of what we're told in Scripture that we're supposed to pray for people in office. We don't get to pick and choose. I mean, you really could argue you should pray more for the people who don't line up with your thinking that they'll get a revival in their life. That Holy Spirit will show up in the bedroom and give them the reality check that, wait a minute, man, you're in charge of a whole lot of money and people and you're going off the rails. This is how you should be doing it. Because you can't beat a personal experience with the Lord, right? No one could ever argue with you. You got healed, miraculously healed. No one could tell you that God doesn't heal. <laughs> Thank you. So let's just practice what I'm about to talk about. Lift your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> I just volunteered you all, so you didn't know that I tricked you. <laughs> this is Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 8. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. <laughs> here, send me. Right? Whoa. I'm, I'm just looking at Linda, Trisha's sister down here in the front row. And, um, we see each other all the time. And she'll come home from work and we live together. And she says, uh, today the Lord allowed me to witness to this person. Today the Lord allowed me to speak to this person. Today I prayed for this person. And then I got a praise report back from the other person I prayed with. You get the theme? It's like, when are you doing your work? It's because she's constantly witnessing and winning people to the Lord. Here I am. Send me. I'm willing. I'll go. So that's what I'm saying, that, that Lance's message is so valuable that we, we are here to occupy until he comes and stop comparing ourselves to somebody else. Well, I'm not as articulate as this person, and I don't have the back. It doesn't matter if you've got the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. That's all he ever needed. And Paul even said it. It's even better that I don't boast in my strengths because then all the credit will go to God. But it's us being reluctant sometimes to be used. And by not using those muscles of faith, we don't grow them. 